Hello, my name is Ted Joy. I'm author of the book Delta Blues, and I'd like to give you a brief introduction to the blues, a great American musical form that is around a hundred years old. The origins of the blues are surrounded in secrecy, really. There were no blues recordings until really the 1920s when the first recordings took place, but we have good reason to believe that blues existed long before that. Throughout the South, especially in farming communities, and virtually all of the former slave states, we have evidence of blues music existing before the first recordings. Now, what is the blues? Well, essentially, the blues is a different kind of sound. It's a combination of major and minor. When played musically, it sounds something like this. And you hear that, that broken note, that bent note, that... It's a grace note on the piano, but when played on the guitar or other instruments, the performer will actually try to bend the note. So it's a combination of both major and minor brought together. When played, it is usually constructed in a 12-bar form, and a blues form would sound like this. In the 1920s, we have two different types of blues that spread throughout the United States. We have what's known as the classic blues. A lot of this was recorded in the Northeast, in New York, tended to be performed by female singers. They were usually accompanied by piano or by a small jazz band. But in the mid-1920s, a more rustic style of blues, often known as country blues or folk blues, was recorded. Usually these musicians came from outside of the major cities. They came from the Mississippi Delta, where we find musicians like Charlie Patton and Sun House, or down in Texas, where we have musicians like Blind Lemon Jefferson. They tend to play the music on guitar. Often they played it in very different ways than other guitarists played it. Uh, you'll have them playing it with a, the neck of a bottle or a knife, and then use that to, to get those bent notes that I talked about. These recordings were successful, surprisingly successful. I believe the record companies that recorded them uh, were amazed at the large sales and created a whole stream of music that was very influential in shaping other styles. So you begin to see popular songs take on elements of the blues in the 1920s and 1930s. You obviously hear jazz bands borrow from the blues. Uh, you find it now everywhere, really, and perhaps most strikingly in the world of rock and roll. At the very beginning, rock and roll drew, uh, drew from blues musicians in the instrumentation. I mean, one of the reasons why the guitar is such an important instrument in rock music is because it was very important in blues music. Uh, so they're drawing on the instrumentation of Chicago blues bands like Muddy Waters and Howlin' Wolf. I don't think it's a coincidence that the very beginning of his career, Elvis Presley recorded a blues song uh, at that, you know, really to launch his rock sound, he was drawing on the blues. Also, if you go back, oh, this is more than 50 years ago, the day Mick Jagger met Keith Richards and they began the collaboration that eventually resulted in the Rolling Stones, they met each other on a train where they began talking about blues music and Muddy Waters. And really it was their shared interest in this music that led to them later uh, launching their own rock sound. So today as we look around us, the sound of the blues is everywhere. You'll hear it when singers sing on American Idol, they'll bend those notes like blues singers. You'll hear it in, in church music. You'll hear it uh, obviously in the old, the old spiritual tradition which performed today. You have that same kind of blues sensibility. Uh, you hear it on the popular music on the airwaves. Literally, it's hard to imagine what modern music would be like without the blues. It's almost like imagining what cooking would be like without spices, without the, the peppers and the salts and all the other things we use to enhance the cooking. Uh, so I encourage you to enjoy the blues music. Uh, listen to it, not just in the rock forms where you might hear it on the airways, but seek out some of these great pioneers of blues music and the great legacy that they left us.